Hi everyone, this is Neil Reitertier, also known as the Wax Whisperer. Thank you for joining me in my latest video. I have a couple of patients in this compilation video. And do stay tuned in for patient number two, because I think you'll find it very interesting. So patient one, uh, we're just treating this there right here. As you can see, the lateral aspect of their wax is quite sticky and glue-like. And what I'm having to do is use the, the endoscope to enter the ear and then push open the ear canal ajar because the entrance of this patient's ear canal is quite narrow and this wax plug is significantly broader and wider than the entrance. And you may have just seen those little wriggle movements I um, deployed with the suction probe there. And the reason for that, because this wax is quite sticky and soft, if I apply too much pressure with the, the suction probe against this wax plug, because of the consistency of it, it's very likely going to block the, the suction probe itself. So when you've got a plug like this, you always want to kiss the surface and hover over without applying too much pressure. So I've loosened this wax plug, and it's just now a matter of getting it through this patient's ear canal entrance. And it's just trapped between the first and second bend. So the first bend is on to the left where these hairs are, just at nine o'clock on screen. So that's the first bend. And the second bend is the cartilage you can see on the right. And the ear canal, the, this curvature goes from left and then to right. And this plug, you can see, it's trapped. The, the right-hand side of the plug is, is touching the second bend. And whereas the, where I am now with the zonal suction probe, that's coming in contact with the first bend. So what I'm trying to do is swing this around from left to right. Um, so it goes around that second bend and past that first bend. Sometimes removing wax is like moving large furniture from one room to the other. It won't just fit through the door frame. You're having to manoeuvre the wax on certain angles and planes um, to, to get it through. Um, I think, however, if memory serves me correct, I'm going to use the, the, rye, the new rye uh, ear hook and also the new rye correct to extract this because it's just not, it's not really, I don't think, going to get past the, the curvature, uh, the sigmoid um, shape of this patient's ear. So the sigmoid shape is a, uh, an S shape. We all have this curvature in our ear, uh, some more um, than others. And this patient's got a really bendy ear canal. So when you go past their second bend, you're almost having to do a sharp U-turn to the right, almost 45 degree um, bend to then, well, probably a bit less than that, I would say 30, 35 degree bend to then visualise the eardrum. And the curvature is quite important, actually. It's there and uh, designed to protect the eardrum. So if you have a foreign object enter your ear, um, if you've got a completely straight ear canal, your eardrum is more at risk of getting perforated, whereas if you've got a bendy, twisty ear canal, of course, it's going to help um, protect the eardrum. Now, I will try and update you tomorrow, but you may have remembered um, a friend of mine uh, suffered from a traumatic perforation. Their young toddler had poked um, an oral thermometer of all things into their ear and it's quite a severe perforation. I did upload it on my various social media and my friend attended um, early this week. It's only been four weeks and so normally with um, eardrums, if they are going to perforate eardrums, if they are going to spontaneously heal, it could take six to 12 weeks. But the eardrum is significantly healed. There's still a small perforation now. That's not affecting their hearing. They did a hearing test and it's absolutely fine. I'm not sure if it's going to further heal. And I'll discuss that more in that video when I upload it. Um, so hopefully I get it done in the next few days. So you can see the patient's eardrum now. A little bit of wax there. Let's just mop that up. So I'm going to go in with the fine end suction probe. Don't need the full zone of suction probe here. It's going to be too noisy. So I'm just going to lift that off the floor. We don't, if you've been watching my videos of late as well, um, more often than not, when I'm removing residual wax like that, uh, thick, thick blankets of wax or skin, no, normally skin, uh, there's always a pathology hidden underneath it. But yeah, more, more so with skin, that was more wax. But if, you, if I see a thick blanket of dead skin on the floor of the ear, the ear canal, I'm going to try and remove that if possible, because you know, I've been spotting potential canal cholesterol and benign osteonecrosis is, um, very frequent, frequently of late. So I'm just mopping up here near the entrance. So you can see um, with the endoscope, you can't see the in inside of the patient's ear, ear canal there. It's so bendy and twisted. So we're going to have a go to the left. 
in a minute. Well, I'm just going to carry mopping up. Yeah, I'm just going to mop up this sticky, sticky glue-like syrupy wax. So if you, if you guys want to use a cotton bud in this region, that's fine. That's not going in the air. Just use it delicately. You can just spin it without applying too much pressure. That can, that can remove some of that. But you don't want to go deep in there because you can damage the thin lining of skin. So this is patient two. Patient two attended reporting a blocked left ear. And you can see there is some matted hair and um, with the wax and keratin, but there was a, quite a big gap at the opening of the roof of the ear canal. So now you can tell this is probably a bit of an older video. So I'm using the, uh, the old ear hook that I used to use, the St. Bart's. And I mean, that might be an interesting comparison. You can see just how broad this one is at the tip compared to... Um, the previous one now generally it served me quite well but it's just in very hard lumps of wax I just wasn't able to penetrate and I wasn't able to glide through so this patient he has the eardrum at first appearance you may think that they've got a normal eardrum but you can see maybe a couple of bubbles there so this patient's got a condition called um, secretory or uh, serous otitis media also known as middle ear fluid it's got buildup of non-infected fluid and what I got the patient to do there is to do the valsalva. I got them to close their mouth, pinch your nose and blow. And by doing that, what you do, you force air up your nose, up the eustachian tube, which is a, an orifice that connects the back of the nose to the back of the eardrum, to the middle ear cavity. And um, that's forced air bubbles into that fluid. So why has this patient got this? And they've got this condition because... For some one reason or another, the eustachian tube, which I just described a moment ago there, it's become obstructed or blocked at the back of the nose. And when that does, it means there's no air behind the eardrum. It creates negative pressure. Your eardrum gets sucked in. All the remaining air in the middle ear uh, gets absorbed by the cells in the middle ear, which then it forces out fluid from the cells into the middle ear. And that fluid can't drain. So if it collects behind the eardrum, uh, we call that middle ear infusion. Now, this is not infected, though. The ear canals, uh, the eardrum is not uh, inflamed. Um, it's not bulging at the moment. Um, but So why has this patient got that? Now, it could just be they've got some congestion at the back of the nose and it's blocked the eustachian tube. But with this, this patient is an adult patient. So if a, an adult patient ever attends with unilateral, serous or um, secretory otitis media, one potential cause could be a nasopharyngeal mass, a cancerous uh, malignant uh, tumour at the back of the, the nasopharynx, and that does require ENT referral. So we have to refer this patient to ENT. Um, if it was acute otit otitis media, so that's... Um, acute otitis media actually is when there's no uh, fluid behind the eardrum, but the eardrum is inflamed, the middle ear mucosa is inflamed. Acute otitis media with effusion is when there's also fluid behind an infected middle ear and that fluid has become infected itself. So there's many subcategories of otitis media. You've also got um, chronic superative otitis media. Um, so it's very important to be able to diagnose correctly. Um, in fact, I've, I've, had, I've worked with one ENT who's previously come, a, uh, come across with a case of uh, bilateral so both, both is serous or um, secretory otitis media. And normally that wouldn't be referred for assessment of a nasopharyngeal mass. But um, this ENT colleague of mine has come across with a case of a nasopharyngeal mass so large that it's obstructing both the right and left eustachian tube. Normally it'll only block one unilaterally. So, um, well, I hope that was interesting for you guys um, and um, do stay tuned. I've got loads more videos to upload in due course. Take care, guys. Bye.